Hi, it's Rob here. Money making ideas. How to have lots more of them so that you're more inspired to go and make more money. I've got maybe 14. Now, before I share with you these 14 ways to get more free, frictionless money ideas, um, one word of warning. Don't try all 14, or at least don't spend so many um, hours coming up with million money ideas that you actually don't implement any of them. So I suppose the one downside to what I'm about to share with you is overwhelm. So be careful not to be overwhelmed because if you spin too many plates when it comes to you know, revenue generating strategies or you know, vehicles of wealth, then you end up getting nowhere. Um, but I'm often asked a lot, how do you come up with more ideas for making money? How do you come up with ideas for your podcast, your books? Um, etc. Uh, and I wanted to give you some easy ways because I think sometimes people think, oh, well, some people are just good at ideas or they've got that kind of brain. I completely disagree. I think that it's actually a, a pretty simple process of coming up with good ideas. And actually, most of the good ideas I come up with aren't mine. They're a hybrid or I was inspired by something or uh, something was solved by someone and I watched it or it was feedback from a customer, a client, a follower, a fan. Um, so there's this big myth that you have to come up with these unique and original ideas all the time. I mean, I'll give you a good example of this. Rage Against the Machine, I don't know if you're into that band. You don't have to be into that band. You probably know who that band is if you're like 30 or over. Uh, and, you know, the singer, Zach de la Rocha, was quite hip hop in the way he sung. But of course, they're, they're rock, almost metal in their music sound. So that band is a hybrid. If you look at all the cars that are out there, the Mercedes GLA or CLA, it's a hybrid of a hybrid. You know, you had a, a normal car, then an estate car, then you had a four by four, and then you had a car that's a cross between a four by four and an estate, and then you had a much smaller version. So actually, a lot of the best ideas are hybrids. Apple, who have many great technologies, actually buy or patent or borrow those from other companies and then give them a better use or utility or improve the usability and the functionality. Um, so I want to get it out of your head that you need to be an inspired genius and, oh, you need to be a big picture thinker to have ideas. You don't. And here are 14 ways you can have a lot more money making ideas um, that you can implement. So the first thing is you want to engage in online communities that could be LinkedIn groups. Probably the best ones at the moment, though that may change, are Facebook groups. Um, and so anything that you're interested in, passion, profession, um, hobby, vocation, vacation, join all the groups. You know, like if you're an entrepreneur like I am, I mean, most people who listen to uh, my podcast and follow me are entrepreneurs. So if you just search in uh, Facebook entrepreneur or business, I reckon you'll find 30 or 40 good groups. You'll find 40 or 50 um, other groups that are either too small or just sp spam fests or whatever. Uh, join them all. Uh, watch them. See, you know, scroll through and see how many comments each post has. Put a test post in each one. See the, the response that you get. And then engage in those communities because people like you are going to be talking about people, uh, the things that you're interested in. Um, they're going to be having um, new, new ideas. They're going to be jumping on certain income streams. So when, you know, I've got one called the Disruptive Entrepreneur Community, which is for followers and listeners and subscribers of my podcast, The Disruptive Entrepreneur. Uh, and in there, there are people who love e-commerce. There's sort of a lot of people who follow me on Instagram are in the fitness business. So that makes me think, ah, oh, isn't it interesting? A lot of people that follow me are in that space. Maybe I can create content or a product in that space. Um, okay, and, and um, it's very important to engage as well. So ask questions, engage on people's threads, try and draw out information, people's problems, pains, experiences, etc. The second thing then you can do, oh, by the way, uh, you can join the Disruptive Entrepreneur community. Just search Disruptive Entrepreneur uh, on Facebook. Uh, the second thing is to listen to podcasts and audiobooks. So audiobooks um, are obviously great for information. I like non-fiction, educational or autobiographical um, audio books. Now, I like audio just because you can do it on the go and it's, it's quicker leverage. Um, but of course, when new books come out, that is a sign of new trends or, you know, spaces, moments in time that could be monetized. So I don't just listen to audio books for the information in the books. I listen to audio books and I look at the charts all the time. What are people writing about? What's trend trending? What's in top of the charts? Why is it top of the charts? What problems do those books solve? Why is that book number one all the time? And it might be because the author's massive, or it might be like The Chimp Paradox by Dr. Steve Peters. And that's always up there. And you think, well, why is that up there? Um, what is it about that book? Because it can't just be his fame because it's been there for years. Or, you know, um, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People or How to Win Friends and Influence People or Think and Grow Rich. You know, there's something in that content 
which um, is evergreen and stands the test of time. And you know, sometimes it's more wise to create a product or have a money-making idea that stands the test of time, but maybe is a bit of a slower burn than something that's really faddy. I remember when I was a, a reseller on eBay, um, Ed Hardy hats were the rage and sold loads of them, but only for about a year and then no one wanted Ed Hardy hats anymore. So th there is that way of doing it with spotting the trends, but the problem with that is um, it can come and it can go. Uh, the next thing, the third thing, is you need to talk to successful people, successful business owners, millionaires, billionaires. I've, got, um, I've had two billionaires on my podcast. Well, I say I've had, I've got one coming up in a week or so um, in the last two weeks. And of course, those conversations open your mind. You're able to ask things like, what's the difference between a millionaire and a billionaire? Which you can only ask billionaires. You can't ask millionaires that. Um, so talk to successful people, business people, wealthy people, people who understand trends, people who work at Google and Facebook who are into analytics and algorithms and you know, understand um, what's going on in the world. Uh, the fourth thing that you can do um, is have mentors and be in a mastermind group. So you, know, you have an idea, you're not sure about it. Uh, and then as the Americans say, you spitball that. Now like you get a hot potato and throw it to someone else who adds to that idea. They throw it to someone else, add to that idea, throw it throw it um, to someone else, add to that idea. Now, by the time you've gone around the whole 12 of you, your idea's probably changed into something much better. It's been stress tested. The parts of it that are flawed have probably been uh, chewed. Uh, and what's left is probably worth doing because you've got the collective minds and the experience. So make sure you get yourself in a mastermind and have mentors you can call up and say, hey, I've got this idea. I just need to run it past you. Now, by the way, this is important. When you have mentors and you're in a mastermind, what you mustn't do is dismiss what they say or just have them to get them to agree with you. You know, why have a dog and bark yourself? Uh, and I have mentored a few people who didn't really want to listen uh, to what I had to say. And I feel quite a lot of pressure as a mentor and when I run masterminds um, because people can take something I say, uh, they can then go and do that thing or not do that thing based on what I said and then that can influence their life. Um, so if I've got something to say that is critical or challenging or they want support, um, and they're really excited about this idea, but actually I feel like it needs some stress testing. You know, that can sometimes put a dampener on their passion and enthusiasm, when in reality it's, it's a smart thing to do because they could be wasting their time and money. So, you know, if you're gonna have mentors and be in masterminds and get advice from people, don't, don't take the advice personally, just see it as a stress test. Um, disassociate the person of who you are uh, with, you know, what they're criticizing, which is just your model. And they're doing it because they care. Um, so you don't take it personally. Um, and you know, if I'm going to pay a lot of money for mentors and being in mastermind groups, I'm going to take their advice or I'm not going to ask them. If I absolutely committed to doing this and I just don't want to be talked out of it, don't tell anyone, go and do it. Okay, the next thing, I think we're on five or six, is watch documentaries. I love watching Netflix and autobiographical documentaries. There's series like the Defiant Ones and then there's the Wealth series and then there's the Titan series. You know, there's loads of successful people. Vivian Westwood, her um, documentary just came out. There's many great fashion designers, billionaires. Uh, Warren Buffett's becoming Warren Buffett. There's so many of them. Uh, and you get a real insight into their story, what makes them who they are, their decision-making and thought-making processes. Uh, and uh, I think that that is really useful. Um, what you do find, though, is they all seem to make money in lots of different niches in lots of different ways, which proves to me you can pretty much make money out of anything. Um, so there's a, there is a, 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 um, a, a business partnership um, who bought the license to the Yellow Smiley Faces uh, and then they have a nice day under it. Uh, and they made, I think, 15-ish million quid in 18 months, um, just putting them on um, plastic bags and anywhere they could sell them and stick them. Uh, and then the, the sort of fad died off in the late 70s. Uh, then they built the business back up in the 80s and sold it for half a billion. From, from smiley faces uh, and have a nice day, taglines. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Beanie Babies, you know, the sort of the bean bags with all the sort of, um, the, the made out of the animals or that guy, I think he's worth a, you know, a billionaire. Um, I forget his name off the top of my head. He's got a th it's, it's something like Ty, it's Ty someone, T-Y. So you can make money out of pretty much anything. Do you remember those slinkies that used to go down the stairs like that? Well, they sold loads of them. Do you remember the Furbies, those bloody annoying um, little pet animal robot-y things? So um, yeah, you can pretty much make money out of anything. It's you know, how you do it, not what it is often. Okay, the next thing is, is just to be naturally curious. Do you walk down a shopping center with your head down or on your phone, or are you looking at all the buildings and looking in all the shops and looking which shops are really busy and where everyone's, is Pandora really, really busy? 
Um, you know, at the moment, I, I just noticed when I went down the shopping centre in Peterborough that Rolex aren't in um, one of the big retailers anymore. It might be Goldsmiths or, or Leslie Davis or someone like that. So it looks like Rolex have pulled themselves out of that retailer which tells me that's interesting. It probably means they're trying to elevate their brand and their positioning. So if you go down with your head on your phone all the time, walking into people, you don't notice what's going on out there. Every time you see people, talk to them. Instead of going, wah, 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 my life, wah, 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 verbal chunder, bleh, all over them, you could ask them what they're doing, what problems they're having, um, you know, what's working well in their business or their life. What are they watching? What are they interested in? Um, because if you're naturally curious, you will find the answers hidden in plain sight before most others. The next thing you want to do is compartmentalise some time for your ideas. Um, so a lot of people have got great ideas, but you can't have great ideas when your brain is full. You have great ideas when your brain is empty. Um, and there's been a lot of scientific research into this. Why is it that you have your idea on a long walk or in the car or in the shower? Why is that? Because your brain is emptying. You're not putting anything in it. You're not checking emails or on social media. Your brain is starting to empty itself. You can only have ideas when your brain is more empty, not when it's full of what have I got to do in the day and what's stressing me out, etc. So you actually put two or three hours a week for thinking time. Steve Jobs was famous for this. A lot of thinking time. He's gone a lot of long walks. Um, and I, most of my work is with my brain now, not my hands. Um, which is why when people say, hey, Rob, you look like you work really hard, I, I can't say I don't physically work really hard, but I do think really hard. And one good idea is worth one or five or maybe even 10 million to me. So I mustn't be busy on small tasks. You know, don't let the menial get in the way of the meaningful. I'll try and say that more, more um, poetically. Don't let the meaning, oh, bollocks. <laughs> don't let the menial get in the way of the meaningful. All right, next then is talk to customers. Talk to people who are complaining. Talk to um, users of your products. Um, I'd say about five to 10 times a week, I speak to customers on the phone. Um, I remember listening to a podcast and a businessman gave me an idea. He said, at least twice a week, just uh, randomly go into your um, software uh, and pick out a customer and call them and just talk to them. One, they'll be blown away by your sense of um, your personal touch and that you care. But if you just talk to customers every day or every week, they will tell you what they love, what they hate about you and your competitors. I always ask people about my competitors whenever I can. Um, if anyone's left a competitor, I'll try and have a chat with them and see what's going on, what intel I can get. Um, because again, most answers are hidden in plain sight. Um, so the next one, which is, is linked to that one, is dealing with complaints. Um, see a complaint as a gift, as a way for you to solve a problem, to find out what was wrong, disassociate you taking it personally, uh, endeavour to solve it, work out um, what was wrong with them, work out why that went wrong, fix that, um, and then um, over deliver on the service so that you can make, make them really happy and then and put that into your future products and services to increase the value of it. Okay, the next thing is you can see what's trending. So you can go on Google Trends, you can um, go on Twitter Trends, you can um, pretty much search what's trending um, and you can get updates from Google on what's trending and just work out what's trending. Now, sometimes that does mean that your business model is a fleeting one. It might last six or 12 months as long as you're aware that that's the case um, and you're not banking your whole life on it. Um, but, you know, a lot of e-commerce sellers I know who make millions, essentially they just find out what's trending. They go and buy a few of a lot of products. They test them quickly and then what sells they scale up and then they don't restock what doesn't. Whereas a lot of people are going, oh, I love to bake cakes. I'm going to bake cakes my way. And I don't care what anyone says. I'm baking cakes my way. Hey, everyone, come and buy my cakes. But no one buys the fucking cakes because no one wants cakes like that. Um, so you've got to listen to the world and the markets, what they want. It's, it's not just supply, it's demand too. Okay, next thing then is to research different niches and different industries. Um, you know, now you think, don't you, you look at your competitors um, which actually I've not written down, but looking at your competitors and what they're doing, what they're up to, what they do well. Sam Walton was famous for being in all the other retail shop shops all the time, you know, as a sort of like a mystery shopper or a pretend customer. Hmm, what's working? What's not? What could I borrow? What do they do well? What are people buying? What are people not buying? Should I buy this retailer? Because obviously they, they made a lot of acquisitions. So that's something you can do. But in addition to that, which is probably just as useful, is why don't you go and look at what other industries are doing, watchmakers, hi-fi companies, car manufacturers. Um, you know, what do really good disruptive companies do? There's a new company, a fairly new, really disruptive company um, in the um, sort of clothing space called Gymshark. You should go and check what they do if you're a retailer as opposed to, you know, checking Nike as well. Um, there's a, a sort of a new social media company that's quite disruptive called um, Social Chain. You should go and check out what they do. Um, 
So different industries means you can borrow things and hybridize them into your niche and create something new and exciting for your customers, clients, followers and fans. That's often how fashion develops. Um, I've got a, a, a zip up top, which is bloody expensive. And it's, it's, it's got those holes designed in, you know, where you put your thumb into the hole. And now that came because people, when they were cold, did this with their hands and covered their hands. And then over time, they sort of um, just forced a hole in and they put their thumb through. And now they actually design that into clothing. Um, so you can look at what your user's doing. Sometimes a user is using your product, um, not as you intended it to be, but in a different format and way. And then maybe that's how the product should be better. Um, a lot of smartwatches are being used to track people's heart rate and not just for like our oh, exercise and stuff like that. But now some of them um, can, get, can send immediate warnings if there's a regular heartbeat. So if people's heart stops for like, you know, a few seconds, it can actually send messages out and it can diagnose in real time. I think that's a better use for an Apple Watch than just to have a watch that you've already got a watch on. So that might morph into a different function. Uh, and then the final thing I'm going to say is have a real desire and hunger to solve problems. Don't shy away from them. Don't bury your head in the sand. Don't be the ostrich, which is tempting to be. Actually have a hunger and a desire to solve bigger and bigger problems. Now, when you do that, um, one is you will get paid more money. Two, you will have more customers. You will be a leader because people perceive that you solve big problems. And because they're a bit scared too, they'll follow you and they will um, sort of, you'll be the um, disruptor, the innovator, the trailblazer. Uh, but then what it will do is it will bring a bigger opportunities, which also have bigger problems to you. All right, so let me summarise them for you. And if you're watching, by the way, on this live, I'm actually going to post, publish this not on the Disruptive Entrepreneurs podcast, but on the Money podcast. I don't know if you know that I have a second podcast. It's called Money. This is all about money making ideas. So this is going to be on the Money podcast. So if you don't already subscribe, just search for the Money podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or um, you know, Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, let me summarise them because I'm told that people like the summaries because I talk fast and it's nice to finish that way. Um, how can you make and have more money ideas more freely and more easily? Engage in communities and um, groups and find out um, what they're talking about, what's trending and you know, where the buyers are. Two, listen to podcasts and audiobooks on the content, but also you know, what, what's trending and popular in terms of theme or style. Talk to very successful people, business owners, celebrities, people who manage and are agents for very successful people uh, and unpick the models of success. That's what I do on my podcasts. Um, have mentors and be a mastermind so you can stress test your ideas. Um, watch documentaries, watch autobiographies, um, ideally the non-fiction ones that are educational. But, you know, sometimes the um, fiction ones are also good, depending on what they are. Be naturally curious, listen, seek to learn, to understand, to be a humble student in everything that you do. Keep your head up and look around rather than stuck on your iPhone. Um, Compartmentalise your time so you've got space for ideas to come in. Empty your time. You know, like, I have tried um, meditation. I do do it from time to time. I'm not the best at it and I sometimes do have a little bit of banter with it. But, you know, the great thing about meditation is if you can empty all those interrupted, small, negative, menial thoughts, then what you can do is fill that with more empowering, positive um, and meaningful thoughts. So don't let the menial get in the way of the meaningful. Um, talk to customers, deal with complaints, uh, research different industries, research your competitors, hybridize ideas, fuse different things together to create something new like Rage Against the Machine did for music and many other bands have before. And then have a general desire and hunger to learn and solve problems. And make sure you check what's trending on all the trending sites. Researching into um, search engines and um, keyword tools to see what's got high volume. All right, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. And also remember, if you're watching this video and not listening on the podcast, um, you can subscribe to my money podcast for free. Thank you.